Hello and good morning. It is Ray Eason with the Ancient Tree of Life channel and podcast show coming at you this morning. It is January 7th, 2020 at 823 in the morning. So yesterday we were talking about uh, picking your ancient Egyptian or ancient Kemetic god, goddess, and also trinity, right? Because it's important, the trinity, the trine, right? The, the expression of three, right? There's a a formula and a secret and a mystery link to that, right? But also what I want to talk about today is one of my favorite subjects is talking about Inanna uh, and Sumer, Inanna Ishtar in Babylon, Aset in uh, uh, ancient Kemet, and then there's Isis, which is in the Greek name for uh, Aset, right? Because the Greeks always like to change shit and add like an S to it. Um, so once again, if you haven't already done so, go ahead and click below and subscribe to my YouTube channel. It'll have this video and all my other videos in their entirety instead of the 55 second short clips. So today I want to talk about Inanna Ishtar or Inanna or Aset, but more so Aset before she was paired up with, with uh, Asar or Osiris, right? When she was independent, when she was on her own. So in Sumer, the story is, and also in, in, uh, in Babylon, that Inanna was the queen or the goddess of heaven, right? Which meant she was in the stars, right? She was in the upper, the, the upper realm, right? And she descended into the underworld, right? She went to visit her sister, Erishkagal, who had a, um, her husband, Erishkagal's husband, uh, Nergal, had died, right? And so Inanna went to pay tribute or her condolences to her sister, right? But her and her sister had issues, right? Issues. So while Anana was the goddess or the queen of heaven, uh, Rishkigal was the lord. There was the lady of the underworld and the uh, the fiery depths of the world, right? And so as Inanna is descending from heaven down into the underworld she goes through these seven gates right and there's that number seven and there's another um uh, uh symbolism for the gates right she descends from heaven to through these seven gates to the underworld right and after she gets there well, while she's descending she's accompanied by a um uh serpent or snake it's more so of a, a messenger or a deliverer right and he's delivering Inanna to Erishkigal, but he's telling her she must strip herself of all these god goddess or godly things, right? Um, and there's like seven of them, I believe. And when she gets to the underworld, essentially Erishkigal loses her flipping mind and kills her, right? She's uh, Inanna's killed. She's put upon the cross and she dies, and then um, she's saved afterward, and she ascends and she rises back up, right? This is essentially the same story in ancient Kemet or ancient Egypt, where we have Aset who brings Asar back from the underworld. She does not, she descends into it, but more so Asar does, and she tries to save him or bring him back to life, right? So the Egyptians, the ancient uh, people of Kemet, put a different spin on it, uh, a different meaning or a different lesson. Why am I telling you this, right? Some people are very, prone to loving the ancient stories, but they don't see the syncretism or the flow of these stories from one to the next. But there's always ancient lore or mystery written inside of it, right? Hidden inside of it for the person, for the adept who can read into it and then sort of uh, um, um, synthesize this information. So the, the, the lesson behind today's video is that Aset, who was also Inanna or Inanna Ishtar, was also paired up or partnered with her sister Arishkagal in in Sumer and Babylon, but also Nephethes in ancient Kemet. Remember, Nephethes was also the sister of Asar and Set, and also um, Aset, right? So, and Nephethes was also paired or was the consort of Set, right? And Set would have been Nergal in ancient. Babylon and in ancient, I believe also ancient Sumer, right? And why am I sharing this with you? Because when yesterday we talked about taking, picking one god or goddess and then pairing it up to have a duality and then finding the trine to have the expression of three, this gives us a four-dimensional formula to work with, right? 
it gives us the four. It gives us the the lore or the energy or the essence of Aset, her opposite female aspect, which is Erishkigal or um, or uh, Nefethis. Also, their their consort's partner, which would have been Nergal in Sumer and Babylon, and Set in ancient Kemet or ancient Egypt, right? And then we have Osiris, right? And Osiris or uh, Asar in ancient Sumer was Demuzi. I believe it's even called. He's even called Tammuz. Uh, is Demuzi, and then in ancient Sumer, in ancient Babylon, it's the same thing: Sumer and Demuz or Demuzi. And then in ancient Kem or ancient Kemet, he is Asar, and to the Greeks, he's Osiris. So now we have these four aspects, and not just the one, not just the two, not just the three. We have the four. So while you guys are working on picking your ancient Egyptian god or goddess, factor in, just focus on the one, and then read the stories, find the lore that pairs it up with the two, the three, and the four. Once again, thanks for watching, you guys. This is Ray Easton with the Ancient Tree of Life channel. If you have any questions, comment below. Also remember to like, share, and subscribe for more instant notifications and great videos and content. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.